Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Ottawa Valley Rambles. In this episode, we explore the location of the first settler farms and the oldest road in the region. Please enjoy. So we're on the edge of the Gatineau River and I'm looking at the Highway 50 that goes over to Gatineau. And as I pan over here, you see the bike path that goes along the Gatineau River. And Rick is going to tell us a little bit about the original farm, the Gatineau farm, as it was called. And uh, take it away, Rick. So this is the Gatineau farm. Uh, G-A-T-E-N-O is how the family spelt it. And that is because they, when they first heard the name of the river, they heard it um, they only heard it. They had never seen it written because nobody had ever written the name with, uh, in its modern spelling. So here what we have is the Gatineau Farm. Right in front of me on this side of the path is exactly where Philemon Jr.'s house was and the original house uh, of the original settlement. So in 1800 they built a shanty, a square log shanty, uh, one story with a, uh, uh, it was just uh, built as a shelter, so they nicknamed it the Wigwam. Here I am standing in the exact location of Philemon Wright's uh, first uh, settlement, his first farmhouse. Uh, it was at first a square log shanty that was built as a shelter when they first arrived. So they climbed the bank of the Gatineau River, arrived here and then chopped down trees and cleared a farm. Now, I, most historians and, and, well, actually all historians, and even me, thought that this farm was cleared by Philemon Wright. It wasn't, in fact. Philemon Wright himself writes in his report that it was his son Philemon Jr., who was 18 at the time, who cleared the farm. And he put this land and the farm in the hands of Philemon. And then when Philemon married in 1808, uh, he married Sally Olmsted, who ends up being Nicholas Sparks' uh, wife later on. Um, they, uh, they ran the first farm from here, and uh, they built a three-story house right exactly on this location and abutted it to the wigwam. So, um, and it was in an unfinished state for a number of years, so that's why in 1860, uh, at, well, I don't know the date exactly, but in 1860, it was still standing, although in a very di dilapidated state. So this is, I'm standing in a living room. So Philemon and Abigail arrived here with six of their eight children, two yet to be born in, in uh, Hull Township. They arrive in 1800. Uh, Philemon Jr. is 18 years old, Tiberius is 15, and Ruggles, who we hear so much about, is uh, five years old. So much of uh, everything that is cleared here and much of everything that happens in Wrightstown in its infancy uh, happens as a result of the efforts of Philemon Sr., Philemon Jr., and Tiberius. But because Ruggles lives a long life, uh, he's the one who gets to write the history, which is why we hear so much about Ruggles and so little about Philemon Jr. and even Tiberius. Uh, this is indeed cut limes, cut limestone. You can see, particularly on this side, there is a flush, flush, flush cut, which uh, rarely, rarely happens naturally. Um, when you have a fracture in limestone, it's rarely ever as flush a cut as what you have here. So I would suspect that this might be part of uh, the foundation of the second house, so Philemon Jr.'s larger house. Uh, whether it's a location of the foundation or whether it was either left here or, or thrown here uh, is anybody's guess. But it could very well be, given the height of where we are, this could very well be part of the foundation of the home. Because the house, I suspect, would be on the higher ground, which would take it right across the, where the, uh, the bike path is. 
into that, that deeper area that we were in. So where, where I'm standing here is on the, the end of a road that leads right to the Gatineau River. And at the other end, it leads to St. Joseph Boulevard and Hull. St. Joseph Boulevard having been uh, one of the earliest roads. But this is the earliest road in the Gatineau, in the Ottawa Valley. The earliest road that led to the Gatineau, from the Gatineau farm down to the Chaudière Fa Fa Falls, from um, Philman Wright's farm, uh, all the way to his second home by the Chaudière Falls, which was called the Columbia Falls Farm. So this is the oldest road you can walk on in the Ottawa Valley. And it used, at one point it was called Leamy Lane because it's part of Leamy's farm. It also had a, quite a pejorative name. And um, some of the oldest people in the area, including my Aunt Liza and many others, told me the story that they had another name for it. And it was called um, the N-Word Lane. And I do believe that is because, uh, and would date right from Philemon Wright's time, because London Oxford must have had his first shanty on this road. And so that is likely why it was called um, the N-Word Lane. Wow, that's brutal. And who is London exactly? London Oxford was the first black, free black man uh, ever in the Ottawa Valley. He accompanied Philemon Wright with his wife and kids. Um, he accompanied Philemon Wright and uh, the three other families uh, who came up in 1800. So would using the N-word in those days been, would it have been a derogatory term or just a descriptor? Both. Yeah. I don't think that anybody would call a black man the N-word to their face, but it certainly was the word that was commonly used by white people to yeah. describe a black person. So what are we looking at here, Rick? It is a huge, heavy piece of cast iron with two enormous spikes and obviously two missing spikes. And this is a, it's a decorated piece of iron. So what its use would be, I have no clue. What are we actually standing in here? There's we are standing in Andrew Leamy's office, right exactly in the office. Another piece, look at that. Beautiful little piece of wood, decorative somewhat, painted on one side. Parts of the office. So Rick, we're up on a big foundation above the, the original Leamy Lane that you mentioned just earlier and Correct. close to the bike path by the Ottawa, or sorry, the Gatineau River. Yes. So what exactly are we on top of right now? We are right on top of the stables or right inside the stables. And uh, we were in the office a moment ago and found all kinds of cut limestone from, from a foundation that has been, uh, looks like, thrown about. Here's a picture of the stables. Now the reason why I, I mentioned the stables and not a barn is because Andrew Leamy, uh, like Nicholas Sparks, like most Irishmen in Canada at that time, had, uh, if they had mo once they had money, they usually had racing horses and were very involved in horse racing. So when they talk about the horse racing on the Ottawa River, or the horse racing on um, uh, the canal and whatnot, it, it all began with the Irish settlers who came here and quickly began to raise prize stallions. Okay. So where we are standing is actually, if I stand right here, I am on the foundation that still exists of Andrew Leamy's house, the Leamy farmhouse. So you can see the bike path coming along here and the corner of that would actually be the corner of the back of the house, if you will, <clears throat> because the front of the house faced the river. Uh, that corner is, can be seen right here on the bike path. You want to show me where, where that went again? That goes exactly right here. I'll walk it. So this is the corner of the foundation right here. 
And the whole foundation is right here underground still. And when they did the archaeological dig, they had no, they did not um, consult with the Limi family because we could have told them exactly what was here and what, what they were looking at. So they co consulted a local historian to, to guess at what might be, where the house might be. And they uncovered the house with a very large summer kitchen that continues along that way. And um, they guessed that it must have been Andrew Leamy's house, but they did not know. The historian thought it might also be Philemon's first house. Uh, history has shown, or recent history, recent research has shown that they're actually in two different locations. So uh, Leamy's house was right here. And um, my Aunt Liza, who was, she lived to be 105 years old, she, um, who I sat at her feet listening to her tales, and my dad wrote down a lot of what she talked about. She actually lived in this house for a while, and she was Andrew Leamy's daughter-in-law. So she married uh, Walter Patrick Leamy, and, uh, sorry, she married uh, Charles Stuart, uh, yeah, Charles Leamy. And um, she lived to be 105, as I said, so her lifetime spanned the Leamy era and my era. <laughs> and uh, so we had a great description of everything that was here. And I remember long before the bike path was ever constructed, I remember my, my father bringing me up here when I was a kid. And we would kick at the stones and he would show me where my great-great-grandfather lived. So we are looking at a well, a hand-dug, hand-stacked well. So this, was, this is most definitely from the 19th century. Um, in the aerial pictures in 1930, it appears to have been covered over. Uh, so I don't believe it was even functioning as a well during Andrew, Andrew Leamy's time. Uh, so I suspect that this was a hand-dug well that served, certainly served the Leamy family, but it uh, maybe early on but it likely was dug by either Philemon Jr. or Philemon Sr. himself. So I, uh, when I showed this to Ian Badgley, the archaeologist, he said um, it would be a very good bet that this would have been dug uh, quickly and importantly uh, at a time when they needed a good well. In other words, during the time of Philemon Wright. Probably one of the only existing structures from the time of Phil Philemon Wright that is intact. Yeah, no kidding. And it's right here about We're, five meters from a bike yep, path. Five meters away from the bike path, about um, 100 meters away from Andrew Leamy's farmhouse. Thank you for watching, and please refer to the video description for further reading on this area. If you enjoyed or learned anything from this video, please like and subscribe to see more videos like this. See you soon.